What's up visionaries and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be giving you all a tutorial using generative AI in Adobe Illustrator to create this colony on Mars. Seeing what some of the strengths are versus some of the limitations and just getting a sense for what this new AI can do. Be sure to like and subscribe. Lots more tutorials on the way and let's get into it. Okay, so I have my artboard ready and what I'm going to do first step to using the generative AI is to just hit M for the rectangle tool and draw a box around where you want the generative AI to populate. And then we are going to go over here into this type menu and you'll see there are four different options here. Subject, scene, icon, and pattern. The scene will generate an entire vector scene, including foreground, a background, and details in between, versus a subject, which is going to be a more contained object that is high in detail, but without a background, versus an icon, which is kind of similar to the subject, but the icon is going to create a vector element that has less detail, so it's going to look like more of a logo. And pattern should be self-explanatory. It's just going to be a repeating set of icons, essentially. So we're going to start here with scene because we want something that has a foreground and a background. And when you type in the prompt, right here I have something that says colony on Mars with buildings and planets in the distance. Adobe recommends sticking with simple and direct language. We're just gonna hit generate and see what it comes up with. So. You'll see here on the detail slider, I'm choosing a minimal detail composition and we're just gonna let it generate and see what it comes up with. So here is the first option. I like that, I like the planets. Another option, ooh, okay. And our third choice here. So let's move this detail slider all the way up to complex and regenerate to see what it comes up with just so we can compare and contrast the difference here. So one thing that I've noticed about the detail slider is that as you can see here from like the minimal to the complex composition is that it doesn't necessarily add more detail into the subjects but rather it kind of just adds more subjects. So you'll see here there's a lot more little mountains and like terrain you could say and overall the image is just a bit more busy another tool that we can use here is the style panel so if you go ahead and turn toggle this on you'll see two options here artwork or picker what the artwork selection does is it will choose it will take inspiration from the other elements on your illustrator doc and create artwork that is in a similar style and then we have this picker feature, which is really neat, and it pulls up our best friend, the eyedropper tool, and allows you to pick a specific element that you want to mirror the style of. So I actually have dropped this image in my document, not my design, shout out to Behance here. Um, and I really, what I really like about this image is that it has all these different gradients and this kind of like grain effect, you could say. So we are going to choose this here. It has been added to the style picker and you will see it reflected in this menu over here and then we're just going to go ahead and regenerate and see how that works. So you can definitely see some parallels in the two images. Didn't get as much grain as I was hoping for but that's okay. Um, we see some subtle gradients here in the mountains. I'm gonna see what the other options are. What I like about this one is that there's not a ton of detail here in the foreground and there's lots of room for us to add. So let's get into it. So I'm going to take my rectangle tool and just create another rectangle here and type out city skyline with different size buildings. As you can see here, it doesn't have a background so you can easily kind of integrate it into the scene already. All of the objects using generative AI are all paths that can be edited and manipulated. So here I kind of want to move our little Saturn up a bit so that it's still visible 
in the city and I'm gonna move this planet down so now I'm really happy with this background and I'm gonna going to go down here into this recolor feature which I have to be honest I love color so this is one of my favorite features of generative AI is that you can now you can also type in prompts with different color schemes so we're gonna test out a few examples here I'm gonna try rainbow and see what happens and you can see that it will give me a bunch of different options that are really saturated and pigmented. Okay, these are super fun and cool. I'm gonna type in moody and see what that comes up with. It just kind of brings down the hues a bit. You can see there are also a bunch of different sample prompts. Lavender Storm. Ooh, let's try Lavender Storm. And honestly, I think we should go with it. I'm kind of digging the purple. So Lavender Storm for the win. So now we are going to add some subjects in here. And let me think of what would be on my ideal colony on Mars. I'm going to say like a table with lots of food on it. And as you can see, I am still using the style reference asset of my artwork panel. You can see though that the table has like the two main legs, but there's not really legs behind it. So we're lacking a little bit of dimension there. That looks good. And then I'm going to add another subject and say, I want a hamburger. I, want, I would love to eat a hamburger in space. So I'm gonna say hamburger on a plate so that hopefully it generates something that can easily be placed onto the top of this table. And you can't have a hamburger without some wines. Actually, that's a terrible combination, hamburger and wine. I honestly am just curious to see how, how this is gonna play out. All right, so we got the landscape, we got the food. Now we just need somebody to eat it. So let's put an alien in here. All right, okay. They're looking kind of funky funky and cool here. Okay, so let's put this alien right next to the table. Like they're getting ready to feast on this delicious wine and hamburger. I actually want to put two aliens. So I'm just gonna command C and then command V and I'm gonna take another option from the variation menu. Look, we have like a masculine and a feminine alien. So now let's switch over here in the type menu. Let's switch over to icon. And let's add a little logo onto one of their houses. So again, these icons are going to be more simple. We can still have a reference asset of our current artwork. So let's try a flower. Very significant range of styles here in the icon selection. Um, I do like this one that has a bit of an outline. So let's take this and so let's bring this flower over to the hut this is going to be like the symbol of the house and i'm just going to put it right on here cute and there we have it our mars landing scene using generative ai so overall impressions of generative ai in adobe illustrator is it's definitely decent if you're looking to create a composition quickly don't have a lot of time it will definitely get you results that you know you could post somewhere, you could use on a flyer, on some type of graphic. So in that sense, I think it is really great. I will say there doesn't seem to be a huge range of styles. It seems like everything, all of the shapes and images are a little bit more abstract rather than concrete, more advanced. So be sure to comment below and let me know what tutorials y'all want to see next. And we'll see you next time. Mwah.